Hi everyone, this is OCD Live, I'm Ali Grayment, and let's get to some questions. So the first question is, when I'm on the road to recovery, I feel a lot of the times that I'm not recovering and it's really discouraging. I want to feel like I'm not a lost cause. So the first question I have is, hi, when I'm on the road to recovery, I feel a lot of the times that I'm not recovering and this really discourages me. I don't want to feel like I'm a lost cause. So when you feel like you are not recovering, you have to examine how you've been reacting in previous days or today and previous days. If you have been doing rumination, you're going to feel worse. Rumination or any other type of reassurance is going to make you feel worse. So it's not... Um, it's not a situation of being a lost cause and it's not a situation well I'm never going to recover it's a situation of you chose to do reassurance and now you kind of pay the price of feeling worse afterwards because it, it, if you choose to do reassurance even though you feel better for a moment it still it still gets you somehow you know uh, and that's just been proven by, by pretty much everybody who has OCD so um, it's you did the wrong thing and then the brain sent you more thoughts. Next time you're going to do the right thing and the brain's going to send you less thoughts. That That's all there is to it. It's like, it's like math, basically, you know? So it's, your recovery is completely within your control. It's not something that's um, more like, well, you know, what if I never recover or things like that, you know, and, and this is actually a common OCD thought of what if I'm never, uh, I'm never going to recover and that can become an OCD in itself. So you kind of have to watch that kind of, uh, line of thinking as well. But if you are feeling like you're doing not so well, re-examine how you've been, how you've been, um, reacting to the thoughts if you've been reacting with reassurance with rumination change it and you're going to change how you feel and I, I see people go from level 10 like 10 out of 10 OCD to level 5 in about a week or two weeks because they just kind of get their act together and just start you know no matter what if it has to do whatever your theme is so say for example your OCD theme is driving right and uh, so you were reacting to all the driving thoughts, going back, whatever, doing all the things like typical um, driving OCD things, right? Um, and then you say, enough is enough. I'm not doing this anymore. It's not working for me. I'm, I'm done with this, right? And then you start to just disregard any thought that has to do with driving because they're all OCD, right? So it doesn't matter how, is it this person or is it that person that you've hit or, you know, or whatever, whatever the situation is, it's still overall to do with this one central theme. So anything to do with this theme is off limits. You're not thinking about it. You're not analyzing. You're not judging. You're not uh, paying any attention to any feelings that have to do with this theme. And as soon as you disconnect like this and making an active choice to disconnect like this, you will start to have more progress in your recovery but it's just just kind of going through that motion every moment of every day and it's it's difficult because you know it's hard to control your mind 24 hours a day but as much as you can do the work it, it is work it's not just well you know I tried in the morning and then I failed by the afternoon every hour counts because every hour you're either getting closer to recovery or you're getting further away so always trying to do the best you can and you know refocusing is very important and I've addressed this in the last video that uh, um, about uh, uh, doing refocusing because some people say well it's not really good to refocus because it's like you're running away from the problem well kind of yes you know I agree with that but at the same time first of all you're not running away from a real problem you're running away from a fictitious problem and second is if you don't refocus, you're not giving your mind anything new to grab onto. So you're just sitting there. I'm not going to focus on the OCD. Okay, <laughs> you know, what are you going to focus on? So you need to focus on something in order to push the OCD thoughts out. And generally speaking, as a, a personality trait, uh, people who have OCD, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time tend to be very... Um, um, passionate people in terms of getting um, involved in things like they're 
you know, kind of obsessive, but in a good way about everything. So if they say, for example, like they have a business, they're really all about their business. Or if they're into family, they're all about their family. Or, you know, depending on the, what interests them, they get very passionate about it. And it's great, you know, but it's focusing that attention and that um, kind of nature on positive things and because if you if you focus it on something positive you will take that power away from OCD and it will be easier to fight OCD you know because because it is all about switching the attention if you show your mind that these thoughts are not like presenting any danger to you by just kind of going through the motions the mind's gonna let go of it because it's only doing this to protect you from some kind of danger right it doesn't even understand what the danger is it just you reacted to a thought so it sends you the same thought again it's like say for example uh, for example you are throwing the ball with with another person you throw the green ball at them they throw the green ball back you throw the red ball at them they throw the red ball back this is exactly what's happening with your mind and the OCD so the conscious mind like the the, the part of the mind that's doing this OCD stuff creating this OCD and then the rest of you <laughs> you know it's it's it threw the ball to you for whatever just random reason you reacted and threw it back at it you know and then it threw the same ball you know because same colored ball because it thought that it was important it doesn't understand what it is it doesn't understand why this thought is important it's like that part of the brain is like traffic control you know Whatever you throw at it, it's going to throw back at you because it thinks it's important to you, especially if you do it with fear. Because if you do it with fear, that means that it's not only important, but it's also dangerous because obviously you're reacting with fear, right? So if, um, if like in a normal situation, when a person doesn't have OCD, any kind of fear response means there's danger. That part of the mind is not programmed for errors. It's not programmed to understand OCD, which is kind of an error, right? So because of that, it it's it doesn't know what to do. You know, it, it understands that you are reacting to this thought for whatever reason. It doesn't understand why you're reacting to it, but it sees you reacting. So it's going to give you that thought again. So the trick is not to react anymore. And I know in the moment you always feel, not like you specifically, but anybody who has OCD, that people feel that um, if I just solve this one thing, you know, if I just um, figure it out, I will feel better, you know. And it's that quest for reassurance that just goes on and on and on, you know, and it, it never works. You know, I've never seen once when a person got reassurance and felt better. What usually happens there's with reassurance, there's two ways that this can happen. If the situation is very simplistic, just by the nature of the situation that you're stuck on, and it's easily provable, um, and you can't get the you know 100% reassurance because there's those situations where, for example, um, is the stove on? Okay, you go check, or the stove is obviously off, right? So things like this, right? Even with that, there could be variations in terms of uh, the reassurance not working. But say, okay, so say you check the stove and it's fine. What happens is not even five minutes later, most of the time, you'll get another thought, you know. And it's either, like I said, it either has to do with the stove. But what if the stove wasn't really off? What if there was, you know, whatever, right? Or another thought that's of a different nature, you know. So it's, you can't really win with those things, even if they're easily solvable. And what will happen in that situation is the person will go from thought to thought to thought that they can solve. So they'll solve one thought, they'll get another thought. They solve that one, they get another one. And they'll continue to go like this. And eventually, just by randomness of it, they will, they will get to a thought that they can't solve. And, they, and then they will get stuck. Or in another situation, the person will right away get a thought that, you know, they can't figure out, such as like a false memory or a fear about the future or a philosophical thought or so, just something that they can't figure out somehow, right? Um, and what will happen with that is that because they can't figure it out, they're going to do rumination more and more and more, you know? And the more they ruminate, the worse the thought feels, the more real it feels, so it never really stops, you know. So the trick is not to play this game. 
you will not win with reassurance. In either one of those cases, you will get to a thought that you can't solve and then you will get stuck. So don't even try to play this game. Just say anything to do with this thought, for example, like I said, like driving OCD, right? Anything to do with this thought is OCD. I'm not dealing with it. I'm not going there. And I'm going to refocus on something else for now. You know, if you feel like you are not strong enough today, for example, and uh, you have to do rumination, like you have to go back and analyze the situation or, you know, get reassurance or whatever, at least try to delay it. So say, okay, I'm not going to think about this right now, but I am going to give it time, say, in four hours from now. Because what that shows to your mind is that, yeah, the situation is scary to me, but it's not so scary that I'm going to put it in the front of my mind, in the front of my life and put everything else on hold. I'm going to put the situation on hold instead. So it shows that it's important, but not as important as if you would have done reassurance right away. So it's still a better approach. And then when you get to those uh, at the end of those four hours and it's time to do the reassurance, see if you can delay it some more. And because every time you delay it, you gain power and the whole fear kind of loses power a little bit. So it might be or at that point, it might be easier just to dismiss the thought, you know, at least for a little while. So try that as well. Okay, so the next question I have is, um, could you do a video on co-occurring conditions? So conditions that are occurring at the same time. I know depression is pretty common and my second biggest battle continues to be reassurance that it's OCD and not something more serious like a psychotic disorder. First of all, this is completely a reassurance question. You want to know for sure that this is OCD and that there, this is not something else, meaning you want to make sure that this thought is not true before moving on. As I said, this never works because the more you try to figure out if this is OCD or not, um, the worse you will feel about it and the more you will be unsure, you know, and especially if you go through a lot of literature and trying to figure it out online and asking different doctors, everybody's going to give you different opinions, you know, of what they think and da da da. And with OCD, people tend to grab onto every detail of things. So you're going to get more confused. So basically, you have to treat this thought as OCD, you know. So not trying to figure it out, is this OCD, is this not OCD? That, that in itself, the trying to figure it out, means that it's OCD, you know, and I kind of feel bad giving you reassurance because I know it doesn't really help, but, but, you know, it does mean that it's OCD if you are trying to ask what if questions, you know, but you have to stop being on this quest because the more you are on the quest, the worse you will feel in the long run. This is not the road to recovery you know, to try to figure it out. You already know everything matches you, I'm sure, you know, in terms of what I'm saying. And, you know, it's, it's just trying not to look deeply into it. You know what I mean? Um, in terms of depression, you know, OCD is a very kind of painful condition. You know, I mean, I've experienced it myself, as you guys know, um, and it's, I don't think it's depression in terms of uh, having like a clinical depression, um, but more so feeling depressed just for being in the situation. I mean, I'm, I'm sure sometimes it can cause a clinic, uh, clinical depression. I'm not, I'm not an expert on depression at all, so I don't really know, so I'm not going to say. But when you have OCD, it basically takes your life away. You know, it, it, it stops you from doing anything. So, of course, you're going to be depressed about it. So, I would say feeling depressed is really common. I'm not sure if it's considered a clinical depression or when it's considered a clinical depression versus just feeling depressed about the situation. In terms of other conditions, I heard that they can occur, co-occur with OCD. Um, but... In practice of talking to people, I don't really come across it that much. You know, most of the time people just have OCD. It's not they have OCD and then something else. So that's just been my personal experience. And um, while I do value books and all of this, but uh, I find that because I've talked to so many people now, now it's been probably hundreds of people personally talking to them and then, um, you know, probably way more than that through email and I just don't come across people who have 
a lot of things that are kind of like lumped together at the same time in terms of uh, mental conditions. It's usually just OCD or OCD and feeling depressed. That's probably the most I see. Not all the time, but I would say 90% of the time. So the next question they have is, from years of experience with OCD, I discovered that my mind is always looking and searching for triggers to stay in OCD mode. It's amazing, but even if I don't see the news, I always find an opportunity to trigger uh, old OCD obsessions or send new ones. Um, how can I break this pattern? So when you were paying a lot of attention to OCD thoughts, your mind learned that that type of thought, that type of theme is important. So it's trying to find anything that has to do with, with this theme. And a lot of the time, actually, people have a primary theme and the, then a few other secondary themes, you know, that uh, the mind can also send. Sometimes not, but a lot of the times people do. So whatever your theme is, it's going to try to find more ways in which it could be dangerous and bring that uh, information to you. Now, this works very well in terms of real life because it's looking for something that you're scared of and trying to kind of give you all of the possibilities of it to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that you're protecting yourself and you are aware, right? But with OCD, it works against us. So that is why you have this pattern. And everybody who has OCD has this pattern of, you know, for example, uh, driving OCD. Anything to do with driving, the person will react to. Um, or uh, religious OCD, anything that has to do with religion that they um, think of, hear, uh, see on the news, um, anything, you know, that they will react to. So it's uh, the mind kind of learned this pattern and it keeps this pattern. Now to break this pattern, what you need to do is to stop, just like I said in the previous uh, questions, stop reacting to anything that has to do with your theme as much as you possibly can. It's not a perfect process, but as much as you possibly can. If you succeed for an hour and then try to do the same thing for the next hour, now you succeeded for two hours, now do three hours, and now you did a day, and now you did two days. And every time you succeed, your mind learns that even though it was maybe important to you before, it's not important now. And it starts to let go of this. And as it starts to let go, you start to see things more rationally, the feelings, that were so strong and felt so real are, don't feel so real anymore, but it's a process that takes time. And the amount of time really depends on how good you are disregarding the thoughts. So if you're disregarding 50-50, it's like 50% of the time you're telling your mind that it's important and 50% of, of the time you're telling your mind that it's not important. So you're kind of almost confusing it further, you know? Um, so you need to have, like I said in my previous uh, questions, it's, it's kind of, you can see that it's the same pretty much for everybody, um, that you need to have an average of at least 70, 30, but better 80, 20. So 80% of the time you are disregarding the thoughts, 20%, oh well, you know, you tried to do your best, it didn't work out, you know, for whatever reason. So, but keeping that high average of teaching your, basically what you're doing is you're teaching your mind that this thought is not important. And then what happens when you, when the mind actually starts to learn this new pattern is when it see, when next time you see something on the news, for example, or just, you know, something come, kind of comes up in your life that has to do with your theme that normally would trigger you, the mind now learned a new pattern of behavior towards anything that has to do with this theme. It finds it irrelevant. So it's not going to bring it to your attention. It's not going to bring it with anxiety, but it's a training. It's, you know, it's what we're talking about here seems kind of like theory and all about, you know, kind of like a, uh, almost like a metaphysical in nature, but there's actual physical processes that we are changing when we do this kind of recovery work. You know, you're changing how your brain functions when it's presented with the stimuli of the situation you know, of specific situations or specific fears or whatever, you know? So it actually changes how the brain chemistry works when it's presented with those things. So it's it's physical work, it takes time, you just have to be vigilant and every time not reacting. So the second question that I have is, my mind seems to be very quick to manufacture OCD and then I get stuck and um, I start to ruminate and analyze 
and wondering if some OCD could be true um, and wondering if these obsessions uh, um, were deleted from the mind when well, I guess the person's saying um, when they're deleting it from the memory like when they're disregarding it um, they're wondering if they're disregarding it because of the pain that it's causing or uh, because it's OCD. So it starts to, basically, what we're talking about here is doubt. The person is doubting whether it's OCD or not. And again, just like I answered in the other question, if you're getting into this pattern, the more deeper you get into it, rumination is the number one cause of why OCD continues. You get rid of rumination, it's gone. It has nothing else to hang on to. So the trick here is to break the pattern, you have to stop rumination. So you feel yourself getting into it and you think, okay, I'm starting to, to get into the, the situation to try to figure out if it's true or not. Nope, that's too far. I'm not doing this. Not, not causing myself any more OCD. You know, because every moment you are doing rumination, you're actually making your uh, OCD worse for the long run. Like you're getting yourself deeper into the disorder. And tomorrow you're going to have worse OCD because of what you're doing today. So it's, you know, I see it, this is the same pattern that works for everybody, you know. So you can either right now make it tomorrow a better day if you refuse reassurance. Reassurance, rumination is all the same thing. Or um, you can make it worse if you do. So it's um, just understanding that what you're doing right now uh, in terms of uh, choosing to ruminate is causing a lot of damage and choosing not to do it even though you feel like you need to even though it's gonna send it because you know I talk to a lot of people about OCD like I have a lot of sessions with people about OCD right and everybody says the same thing it feels real you know but how can I let go because it feels real and the thing is, it's a choice. You choose to let go of the thought. And yes, it feels real. Yes, it feels like you need to check. Yes, it feels almost like you're doing the wrong thing. Because again, the mind is not programmed to understand OCD. It's programmed um, to understand real threats. So when an error happens, and that's what OCD is, is basically an error in the mind. It doesn't know how to deal with it. It's reacting to it as if it's real. It's sending the feelings as if it would if the situation was real. So, and the only way it, this can stop is if you teach it that it's not true, you know? But when you ruminate, you're actually teaching it that it is true because you're reacting as if it's true. So it's sending the thought as if it's true when it's not. And you're reacting to the thought as if it's true when it, as if it's not. But that part of the mind is reactionary. So it has no ability to um, change the pattern. The only uh, way to change the pattern is for you to change it because the rest of you can change it, but that part of the mind can't. So since one of you has to, it has to be the real you and it has to be just refusing to pay attention. You know, anything to do with this theme is OCD. I'm not buying it anymore. I'm not believing it. I'm moving on. And if you do it like this, you will break the pattern. So these are all the questions I have for today's show. If you need more information, you can visit youhaveocd.com. There's a private recovery program available there with me. Um, there's also eBooks. There is uh, free articles. There. There's a lot of information on OCD recovery. So please check it out. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And uh, please feel free to ask any questions you have for the next show. And I will answer them um, next Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I'll see you next time.